Welcome back once again to the Hogcast. Join the FTCR crew as they cover the latest in Sonic the Hedgehog happenings. And welcome to episode 9 of the Hogcast. I'm Econos Fan, your host, and to my right is... Yeah, I'm FTA. Hey. So when we started doing the Hogcast, our plan was to have TG on one for every episode of every Sonic game he's played. Um, <laughs> so we're on episode 9 and he's not with us today. So we actually went one more. Oh, we did? Yeah, I think he's only played seven. Didn't he play Mania as part of, on top of those? Oh, okay, good point. Mm. Sonic Mania saves the day. Well, it's been. Um, it's we, been. We don't even. <laughs> we don't even know how long. I would have to look it up. I'm not going to. <laughs> the YouTube, yeah, I can't bother. I don't there. have the FTCR login on my phone right now, so I'm not going to bother. Um, so much has happened. We had Sonic Forces, which we are not going to talk about. In the interest, um, full, you know what? Fuck it. Full disclosure: we recorded this on the same day. We, we we've just finished recording the whole of season three of All Stars Gaming. Yeah, it went a bit longer than needed, and uh, Chris needs to leave to get back home. So we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> forego talking about forces, um, because the FTCR LP of forces is gonna begin in like a week and a half. So we thought, why waste your time now? When you're gonna hear about it then, although maybe just in the interest of this, we can quickly sunk, give our brief, brief thoughts on forces. I think it's incredibly mediocre, not a great game. It's a boring, technically sound production that somehow took so many years. Four years, and apparently. It, it feels like so many great ideas, the Kof Sonic team, the usual, so many great ideas, bad execution is kind of how I feel about Sonic Forces. Perfect. Yep. So, I'm uh, moving along. Yesterday, I mean, there's stuff like the movie, but we can talk about that along with the panel recap. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anything like along the way from when did Forces come out? November. Yeah, November. So from November to now, there hasn't really been much. Um, We're know, not going to cover during the panel, I think. Yeah, well, you know, there's there's obviously the the book that comes out soon that we'll, we'll cover that more and says they did release some um, children's books unrelated to the comic book. Came out three different books. Came out a history of Sonic the Hedgehog, a a Mad Libs book, and a book with like three different original written stories. You going to get any of those? I, I have them all. I bought them. All. Oh, um, how are they? I haven't went through them. The, All the, right. The, um, the, cause I bought them like, like this week. So I have that time to sit down and read them. We're like the Mad Libs book. I'm not gonna, maybe we can do a, like a live video where we play Mad Libs. <laughs> so they just Mad Libs. All right. Yeah. But, um, the, the kind of storybook has, uh, and I mean, no real disrespect to, to the artist, but it features not great original artwork. It's one of these books, the one I saw going around with like the Way Us Emerald. Mm, possibly. I haven't, th- okay. I haven't skimmed through it, but it's like, okay. it's like, Tracy Yardley, man. Like anyone, like associated, they need some money. It's like anyone associated with the Archie book would have. Again, no, no disrespect. That person drew Sonic way better than I ever, ever could. But um, the Archie, anyone associated with Archie except for Appenders, would have done a good job. <laughs> it also might have been cool to have it, you know, kind of a consistency between these books right before, say, your new comic property comes out. That way, it's more easily recognizable for kids. I know Sonic's recognizable, but you know, just like a general brand cohesion kind of idea. Yeah, I think at that point, they were giving Sega too much credit. So <laughs> if if you hear some some controller noises, like in our last one, I am currently recording <laughs> footage. New hard cash tradition. Yeah, I am now currently recording footage for our Shadow LP. I am uh, on my like twelfth go round of Westopolis. You poor tortured soul. I know. So if you hear some controller clickety clacking, that is my fault and my bad. Another thing that happened since last time, we had the Adventure Vinyls hit. Um, you have one of those. Mm, yeah, it's good. good yeah. Oh, I, I, I very much enjoyed pawing through that little book in there. I think uh, the Mania of Vinyl come out at that point? The Mania of Vinyl came out probably. If not, that's in this household too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I bought the Mania Vinyl like roughly when it, when it was and I, I bought it straight away. Cause, like, you know, we went not get a CD release. I feel like that hit after the game sometime, yeah. And yeah, I think it, it was it was a like a couple months, I think, after the game. But yeah, the vinyls, the vinyls are cool. Um, it, we still uh, the uh, mania got a somewhat of, of a soundtrack release at least on digital. They call it the uh, Sonic Select. Mania soundtrack selections because yeah. it does not include any of the Sonic One and Two remixes. Which you know, which sucks. unfortunately is it, somewhat to be expected. But it's like, like, come on, guys. Fork over a little extra money. Because, like, I made this tweet a few weeks back. I started playing that Sega Slots app. 
that thing they put out, it's just like Sega IP slapped over stupid little mini game things. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll never guess uh, which track is the one you hear during the Sonic section. Uh, Green Hill Zone. Uh, the Generations Classic Green Hill. Yeah. So oh, they still would have had to pay licensing for that, I imagine. Yeah. So they can fork out the money for Sega slots, not for the official soundtrack release of one of their games. Of of the most of the best reviewed game in fifteen years. Yes. So that's um that that that's great. Don't bother with that app, by the way. That that's not great. Um, name one good Sonic app. Sonic Forces Speed Battle, Chris's favorite game of two thousand seventeen. Sketchhog. <laughs> that, no, that was two thousand and, and. Well, you said name one good one. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> but. Yeah, if we were talking 2017, I guess there's been one. No, so. I'm being, I'm, I'm being, I'm being facetious. I, I, I would say most of these Sonic uh, apps made by Hardlight are actually a lot of fun. I would recommend pretty much all of them. They don't do much for me, but I, they're also very incredibly inoffensive. So I'm glad they exist. I'm glad people enjoy yeah. those. It, it's annoying that Runners had to go away because Runners was a lot of fun. Runners mm. is is probably the best. We'll get to Runners. Game. Don't worry, we'll get to Runners. I do. Um. So is that all? I'm trying to think since. We've had rumors about a Sonic Racing game, but we'll be to get into that. Like, yeah, we're getting to. I think that it, it's possible that might be it in terms of big news. I can think of um, Sonic Boom Season Two ended, and it's you know nothing's officially been said, but um, that it, I feel like it's a little odd that we haven't heard anything, especially at at the panel. Nothing was announced at the panel, which um, it's I I am gonna put smart money on Sonic Boom being dead. <laughs> At this point in time, that probably feels safe. Which, you know, it's a shame. It's a fine show. I'd be okay with that continuing for a few more seasons, just kind of going at, at its own pace. Yeah, well, maybe the last bastion of boom. Maybe you know, get some new writers in to make up some new jokes every once in a while. But you know, it's yeah. that's fine. That's dude, fine. I, I love the Beaver. Can I have another Beaver episode? Um, actually, not the Beaver. No, the the comedy chip. Comedy chip. Oh, God. Great character. See, I thought you like because I'll take I actually the, love beaver. the Beaver. Yeah, I've seen his Beaver. Actually, yeah, I did, you lie down in my mind, position and cry. My my thought process was like the brown one. The brown there's a beaver that's brown, brown, brown but no, that's my color. <laughs> well, even great. see, even, even if there was a uh, season three, we also to go into that. Um, the uh, executive producer, um, for the life of me, I am blanking on his name, but um, he he worked on The Simpsons. He 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 was like uh, the, he sh- voiced the voice of comedy chimp, Bill Buffreyberger. Thank you, Buffreyberger. He's left the show. Oh, he did. So either yeah, he's he's I've said he's officially he's moved on. He's got a new. I think he's got a new job on a different show. Which so if if um, Sonic Boom was to continue, it would be without essentially the showrunner. That makes me wonder if that is in flux. Then what? This well, like the show status. What it sounds to me like is um, in typical Cartoon Network style. Um, it it's cancelled. They just, they just, they just, uh, oh, it's, they just haven't told anyone yet. Well, you know, it, it's what it's like what Archie did with the comic book. They just ignore it. They just don't mention it at all. Mm. So know? Bill is basically being smart. He's like, I, I see the ship sinking. I'm out. Uh, I kind of in a way. I wouldn't be surprised, if, you know. Also, just because, just because of how Cartoon Network treated it in the last year, like it yeah. came and moved, it moved to a different channel, it get kept moving around time slots, things like that. So yeah, it would not surprise me if. Um, if if everyone involved knows, but obviously they can't say anything, that well, would not hurt Shark Boy. You know, if that is the last we see a boom, I'm, I'm glad that show exists. You know, if if it is, I will say the last episode of season two is the two part is probably the best episode that show ever did. So if it is on the, high note. if it is, then they ended on a very on a very good high note. I've yet to see that, but you know, I'm still holding out for like a Blu-ray release or something. Then I'll just watch it all keep that way. Keep waiting, my friend. I'll keep waiting. Keep. I'm, I'm still waiting on some Steven Universe stuff. That's not from like Australia. We haven't even. <laughs> we haven't even gotten season sets, or, or no, we haven't got any releases of something. The only way, the only, the only way, wasn't to, there one cartoon pack? No, the the only way to legally own uh, Sonic Boom episodes on in America is to buy the special edition of uh, Fire and Ice in England. I was really worried he's going to say that. In England, I believe they've released that whole season one in volumes. That's what I was thinking. Which of. I kept on meaning to pick them up last time I was in England. So next time I go, I have to I have to pick them up. <sighs> That's a shame, though, because I. You know, I think it's it it, it was it wasn't a perfect show, and I think in season two, for me at least, the the writing was like it, you could it started to get very formulaic in terms of their jokes. There was like it's a met you know the thing that uh, Boom does, and I, I actually bring this point up in a in a LP that well, no, but by, by the time this goes up, the uh, Mega Man three LP is live. So there was I, I was spoil something. There's a part in Mega Man three 
we talk about the boom cartoon mm-hmm. and I say one of the things is that like the, the meta jokes for me got very tiring mm-hmm. where it was like oh man it'd be weird if this happened and it happens or like man this never happens and it happens like we we you've done that joke so many times. It's like this will please make a, move on. This will make a great four image screen grab on Twitter and it'll get shared around. <laughs> Half the time, I wouldn't be surprised if that's just, just why they make jokes. <laughs> they make those kinds of jokes. Well, yeah, like you know, there's stuff like that, but you know, funny show. On on the whole, I like it. On, yeah. Like it's not a perfect show, but on the whole, I I would recommend it. I do think it, it is a good show. Yeah. So um, just in case, rest in peace, Sonic Boom. Uh, we probably will not see you again. No, although maybe we'll see sticks at some point. Ooh, to maybe. go something that was on the panel. <laughs> God, would we like to talk about the panel? <laughs> oh man, sorry. I'm just looking at this Yakuza Steel book. <laughs> they have their shirts off. That means they're about to fight. Anyway. Well, fuck. So I uh, I ran through some notes. Keep it chronological. Cool. Um, so at the start, they were talking about all the stuff that released in the last year. This is where I get back to Sonic Runners. It's interesting to me that they did not mention Sonic Runners Adventure, which that released. Uh, yeah, but even the uh, they barely mentioned it when it was released. Exactly, which pisses me off a little bit because like that would be a cool platform to keep introducing stuff to. I'd give two dollars for a new zone and character every few months. Uh, it yeah. doesn't piss me off. I should say it disappoints me because mm. I don't know. Like for me, Sonic Runners Adventures Adventure has a weird issue on my phone. Um, Gareth just ridiculously died in shadow. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. That was was that my fault, Chris? Was that my fault? No, thank you. Thank um, you. But it just has a random uh, pause every now and then, and it mm. fucks you over. You know, uh, I was really hoping that would get patched, and I guess it's just dead in the water. Yeah, you know, I I have not watched, I have not downloaded Runners Adventure. Um, I, you know, it's it, it kind of scratched the itch, but I didn't get into it the same way. I think mainly due to that pause thing. But how much is it again? It's like what? Well, it's like three bucks, I think. Okay. It's you know, at some point, I I when I can be bothered, I'll get it. Because again, I really like Runners. Although I will say the. I guess it, it's actual models in Runner's Adventure, and it does not look nearly as, as good yeah. as the kind of this frames. It's just kind of blandish. Um, the next couple notes I made about this panel tied together. Um, they're making Isuka talk a lot in English, like the whole thing, which was interesting. Which ties into my third point: script reading maybe isn't the best fit for a panel aside from Izuka, who probably needs a script. Um, well, I'll say script reading isn't a good thing for a panel where none of the the uh, contributors are actors. <laughs> Ooh, he went there. Well, no, yeah, like, I, I, no, I don't, this I, is how I said it to I'm you. I'm not saying that. You know, I, I'm, I'm not saying that to be a dick. Those people, they they're not hired to be personalities. Their profession is not actors. So the fact that you're making them read these kind of like, oh, what's going to happen now is like, that's not fair on them. <laughs> you know, it's like don't do that. Yeah, I think something to say. You put most people in that position, you get the same results. You know, yeah. Um, it it really felt like Aaron wrote it because you know he was going along with it well, so he probably wrote it, and everyone else was like, "Oh, this is what we're doing." Okay, oh, we gotta do this again. Okay. Yeah. So they did mention the movie. Um, they did. They reaffirmed that November twenty nineteen will be the release date. Oh, I you know I can say right off the bat, I believe Chris, you watched the whole thing. I only caught the last half an hour because I yeah. was at work for the so first half. So I part, just part of this is me catching you up on like yeah. high points. But they did mention that they didn't really give any details. Tyson later said like, "Hey, I'm open, Paramount." I'm open, Paramount. Yeah, that was, that was cute. It's interesting to me that the movie's timing is November twenty nineteen, which would be two years after Sonic Forces. November is the usual time slot for Sonic games. I don't know if, say, Sonic Team prepares a game or if they contract the studio to make a game, but that's just very interesting timing to me. See, I don't, I, I think that notion of um, uh, tying games like that, that's kind of, at this point in time in the current game and climate, that's kind of antiquated. I don't, I don't Most see Most of that's on the phone it. space nowadays. Mm, yeah, so I, I'm sure we'll get some kind of movie tying a la Forces Speedrunners. Hmm. It could be that. I just think, like... You know, how are they going to fill that gap that year if they still see Sonic as like something that needs a release every year? I guess phone would be the way to go. We did get Runner's Adventure in 2015, but I don't know. I I kind of think maybe they'll try and push something out the door with that to some extent. I'm not saying maybe we get a full blown Sonic Team 3D title, but that's just interesting to me. Well, it, it sounds like now that they're kind of treating that a bit more, so may, maybe the next game they're working on is something to tie in with the movie um because you know there's there's something um something i read a while ago i I think i bring this up in the forces lp where there was a post on reddit so this could be complete fucking shit so we take it with a grain of salt but apparently an earlier draft of the movie or it it might be the current draft they're working on Mm -hmm. but apparently a version of, of the movie script at some point featured chaos as the main boss 
which is why he was put in forces as kind of so I guess if if that because there was a time where supposedly the movie was going to come out in time for forces or something yeah, I was guess, the thinking I, I, I think the, I think the very the very first release date given I think it was either the end of 2017 or it was the beginning of 2018 would have been around yeah around when forces came out um, so yeah, it, it's very it's very possible. I could see it that way. I could also see some fan making that up and being like, "This sounds kind of plausible." Oh, talk, I could go either way totally. Again, it's it's Reddit, so yeah. like take everything about that with a massive grain of salt. Yeah, like, I read over the whole thing back then. I was like, "This sounds okay," but I, there's also plenty of stuff I wish wasn't here. But I guess yeah, you're going to get that the, in the Hollywood. The thing. kind of the uh, human reporter hoping Sonic was yeah. like, "I don't need this fucking at all." <laughs> Everything. The, the detective Pikachu human stand in. Yeah, kind of thing. you know, like you know, they had like uh, Rouge was working at like casino, had the, had, like a, a casino type thing. Um, had like car- you know, the, it, it seems to be heavily inspired from SA One. Yeah, because which... I, I believe I think the Mystic Ruins was mentioned in that treatment. Which again, that might just be fans being, like, oh, "I love SA One." Yeah. So uh, we'll see how the movie develops. Um, so they plugged the Sega shop. I just had a quick note. The biggest cheer in the crowd was for Dimension of Yakuza. Made me very proud. Um, Chris, you know, I'm happy for you, man, that this franchise you love is getting some... Some, some good respect. games yeah. from Sega. It's, 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 it's quite... Sonic ain't I was going to say, it's quite um, unique, let's say, for... To have a, a Sega franchise show respect nowadays. Yeah, it's like one of the best things they got going for him. Um, my next note, I would get a drink with Austin Keys. The guy who translates for Izuka, he's always up there smiling, having a good time. I'm like, I get a drink with that guy. We'll revisit that note later. <laughs> uh, the Big the Cat joke quota was reached early. Apparently, oh, apparently, a Big the Cat game will be releasing in 2059. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably when the launch will come out. <laughs> My next note: Nabrock dot Rock is a god among men. I don't know how he is so good at what he does, but he's good at what he does. I'm really glad he got a little shout out. Um, cause he is just fucking crazy. My next note is I'm envious of how Izuka can still look so happy while talking about Sonic. <laughs> because I know I can't. So then we got, um, our first kind of big talking point here. Sonic Mania Plus. Yeah. Looks, looks good. Looks, looks fun. Yeah. There was that project branch on Steam a while back called Plus Project or something or Project Plus. And, you know, that sent everyone to a frenzy. Like, what the hell is this? Um, so, like, just going over, like, the highlights, uh, Mighty and Ray are playable characters, mm-hmm. which is pretty fucking cool. Physical release. Uh, there's going to be a physical release that's coming with a 32-page art book, um, a holographic sleeve cover kind of thing. That, that I'm guessing it's I'm akin like, to that generation's European thing. Yeah, you know, I'm like, that's, fuck it, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's going to have an encore mode, which, quote, has visual changes and a new way to explore each act. My personal bet is that'll probably where they'll shuffle in those missing tra- zone transitions. Hopefully, because you know what? I, I love that. Um, apparently, if you bought it digitally, which is 100% of everyone who bought Mania, yeah. <laughs> well, unless you didn't pay for it, um, you will get a, quote, digital update, and they immediately turned around on this and said, that's paid. Although apparently, which to me, just call it DLC. Well, see, I, although apparently, uh, I think Adam Weber said... It, it was someone with TSZ caught up with him afterwards and they said if you've already bought the game you get it at like a reduced cost So if, versus if you, if you bought the game fresh okay that's something yeah because he said we'll talk about pricing later I think he said pre-orders are going up Monday so this will probably be up by the time this comes out okay but yeah the pricing is twenty nine ninety nine if you're in the States if you're somewhere else fuck you um, <laughs> which I'm going to buy I just, my, my thing is now I have to figure out which uh, console I want to get on yeah PS4 for me yeah, you know, you know, well, what I might do is I might, um, I might re uh, get the DLC on my PS4 copy. And get the Switch. And I might get the Switch version. Yeah, if I had a Switch, that's the way I'd go. Um, I had another note here. I feel better about paying for extra characters in Mania, and it'll probably cost more than I did paying two dollars for Super Sonic and Forces. You pay for that? Well, I mean, just the notion that they were gotcha. charging for that at one time. I feel better about giving more money for kind of. Not much more for Mania. Because again, I'm like fucking. I don't. Guess it's Super Sonic. It's just it should be in the game anyway. I don't, get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, like ideally, all this Mania stuff would be a free update. But depend. depend I get what on, I get. Why on, on how much extra they add, I'm I'm okay with. Yeah, like, I I think I need to see how extensive Encore mode is. Yeah. If it's just like all oh, the badniks look different and there's some slight stuff, or if it's well, like, also it's this like, got to make it's like how much different the right if, if Rain Mighty just Sonic and Tails. Like if, if it is just like a palette swap yeah that's where I get stuck like would Mighty have a wall jump and I like, think, what I does think, Ray I do I think Mighty would have to have a wall jump 
And yeah, not Ray glides, but Knuckles glides, right? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like, like Ray would either fly like Tails or glide like Knuckles either way. Like, we already have that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. With Ray, they're basically just, you know, make, covering new ground, which I'm really interested to see how they handle that. Um, again, the fact that this is happening at all, I, I never thought, I mean, I, I thought the, um, I thought the, watching call it, the uh, Team Hooligan would be like the, the most deep cut they would, <laughs> Wait, be, allowed, they would they him, be allowed yeah. to do. The fact that we're getting Ray and Mighty playable for the first time, well, Mighty since Chaotix, Ray since fucking Sega's Chronic Arcade. That was 93? Three, I think. Yeah, so I'm like, <sighs> crazy. I'm like, Tax Man, fucking you, you rock. <laughs> got that <laughs> silver tongue, apparently. Talk people into that shit. Um, I really like the December 2018, December 2018 fake out. Nice little touch for the people watching. I missed that. What, what, oh, it, what was that in regards to? They just played it straight. They're like, yeah, this is coming out December 2018. They kind of let it sit a little bit. They're like, nah, it's summer 2018. <laughs> like, That's good. I like that. Even if it was, even if it was December, like, we, we already have the game. Like, you know. Yeah, so no big deal. Yeah, I'd be fine waiting a bit longer for that. I wish they would have announced it later in that case, but you know, whatever. Um, so then they had Tyson and, uh, I believe her name was Jasmine up there. And they're like, oh, we're here to talk about Sonic Mania's intro animation. I'm like, ooh, cool, details. I believe Jasmine was the, because she's part exactly. of Sega licensing, and I believe she was the one who helped reveal the Boom cartoon. I think so. So as, as soon as it was, because they, they announced before she was going to be on the panel, I think. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I was like, like cartoon show. Like my, which is also why I was thinking Boom was the cartoon show was there. I was like, ooh, new cartoon show. Uh-huh. Because like, I, I don't understand why they bring her up to be like, season three. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's odd, but yeah. So they strike out all that text about the Mania intro animation. I'm like, oh, I kind of wanted to hear about that. That's not interesting. But then Emil revealed the best sequel to Sonic Rush Adventure, Sonic Mania Adventures. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, that will probably be some short, like, five-ish minute clips we get throughout the year. Yeah, um, I think they've confirmed it's five shorts, and, and somewhere along the line, the notion that they're going to be five minutes each popped up, but I haven't seen that, I haven't seen that, that confirmed by that's Sega. Just, yeah, that's just me assuming. Um, no, I've, I've, I've seen, seen, I've, I've, seen any. I've seen I've seen other people say five minutes. Oh, interesting. So I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, maybe they confirmed it after the panel, but um, maybe we're all just hoping it'll at least be a decent length per episode because yeah. that's 25 minutes total. That's you know, that's good, man. It's just for free again, yeah, free, free content. Free. Yes. Um. So you know, to me, it's less that that's an important thing, but to me, this plus well, Mania plus. Ah, I get it. Uh, like a goose. That's an interesting, it's like a nice salvo of Mania stuff, and it makes me think they're probably going to do something with those guys again. Because why would they waste their time announcing all this stuff if they were done with Mania? Because it's like, I mean, this is the first, and le- this is the first extra version of a game. Because I mean, like, I, I don't count things like SADX because that was technically a port that they just added stuff to. This is like, they I mean, they, they could have just said Mania is coming physical and yeah. ended it at that, but they've, you know, they've kind of have their way to add to add more things to it um, and so you know they clearly they clearly have an interest in Mania which I believe I, I don't think they've released official figures but Mania had to sell a shitload because mm-hmm. wasn't it wasn't the thing that they said where they they upped the um, they upped the uh, collector's edition boxes after the initial yeah thing and if you think about it it was in the Switch's like eShop top ranks for months and what, Switches Mania? yeah and the Switch has sold 15 million units so far so this thing has to be doing pretty okay. So you think at least a couple million. <laughs> at, at least, yeah. I'd say that's probably, hopefully, around well, right. But yeah, so um, my game theory is oh, they God. have like a couple guys, you know, cranking on this stuff for Project Plus, and then the rest of the team is like concepting for whatever's next. I'm not going to say Mania 2, but whatever yeah. they do next. Well, yeah. Because um, they seem to be investing pretty heavily in this like classic side series thing. Well, I, th- I think it's... Um, I'm not sure if you want to jump ahead, but one of the questions in the Q&A was that, and I think Zuko kind of confirmed that. Yeah, that like, I, I think he... Not flat out, but he strongly hinted at going forward there will be kind of two different series going. Yeah, he was talking about appealing to all fans, which is mm-hmm. their usual rhetoric, but kind of feels like now they're actually trying for yeah. that in a sincere, you know way at least for the classic stuff modern series that's uh well that's debatable well yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get there <laughs> so we're revisiting my austin keys drinking note to here um apparently he's the one who suggested that mania sonic would go to forces as a canon explanation and my note oh, really? says he can cover his own tab at the bar now <laughs> i was okay with, <laughs> i was okay with him until this point <laughs> well i mean because i and also think uh because that's the thing in the clip because they shot a small clip of um 
Right, yeah. Mania thing. I guess and we could actually talk about the clip. And he's doing, because it starts with like Sonic, it starts on like Angel Island, I think, because they're playing the Angel Island theme. Yeah. And um, the kind of Phantom Ruby noise appears, and it, and Classic you know, phases in, and he's waving. He's like, big smile on his face, and he's waving, which it... it Missile it, touch. Well, it, cause it took people two seconds to realize that's what he's fucking doing at the end of Forces. Yeah. When he, so it's, and at that point, they, I think, it, 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 at that point, during the Q&A, they fact up said, yes, this is... It was it was like right after that, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think Aaron brought it up. Um, so then they started showing some of Tyson's like, um, I don't know the technical terms, but like the reference art for like the model sheets. Model sheets, yeah. Yeah, and they go through all the characters. Um, I'd be okay with the entire hour was just here's Tyson's art basically because that was awesome to look at. Yeah, his Eggman is like literally just OVA Eggman, and that's all I need from. Oh, don't classic say that. Eggman. that, that don't... Oh, oh, sorry. That'll upset him. <laughs> what? Dude, there was one of the questions, and he said like he. He said he tries to make the characters his own thing. He doesn't like to just copy. Let me amend my statement for Mr. Tyson. You piece of shit, Chris. How dare you insult the genius that is Tyson. It draws in all the elements I love about OVA Eggman. The expressiveness (laughs) and like just the facial and like, you know, all the eye. You can see behind the glasses into the eyes and like the little pupils and stuff. Like I recognize. I'm like, yeah, that's that character, you know. Um, God, I hope that works. Good good save. (laughs) Oh, my next note. I hope these episodes are at least five minutes each. Uh, next note. Damn, Puma. Back at it again with the Sonic shoes. Yeah, what is that? Um, so this is a thing for me. This panel, I feel... You know, we both feel it was really awkward. We both feel these are always really awkward. This is the one for me where this announcement, them reading off a script, I'm like, are they talking to fans or like their investors and shareholders? <laughs> like... It's like, just say, like, hey, we're partnering up with Puma. Here's a trailer. Don't be like, we hope fans will be very excited for our collaboration with Puma. It's like, uh, who? <laughs> Puma? Yeah, I brought you, until I saw that, I forgot they were a company. Puma? Yeah, yeah. I have not seen them, like, I've not seen their shoes around. Fitting like... for something? Oh, sorry, I didn't say that out loud, did I? Okay. <laughs> Send me a copy of Yakuza Kwame 2. Anyway. Well, Alan Rebbe did say those are going to be very limited quality, quantity. And they also, we can go off on a whole tangent about shoe They culture. also didn't even show off the um the actual design. It was blurred. Yeah, it was pixelized. And I kept waiting yeah. for it to like clear up. And he goes, uh, he goes, it will show it when it's finalized. And why, why announce it? Why announce it? Well, there's a whole culture around shoes with like, I don't know if we, how deep down this hole we want to get into. You're aware of like pre-ordering shoes and like there are apps to let you know like, hey, this limited edition shoe, you know, if you're in this target area, you can go buy it right now, but you have to get there right now. I know, I, I know shoe culture is, is big, but like, is it going to be a big thing for Sonic the Hedgehog? Although saying that, I almost bought those Sonic branded shoes that look like his sneakers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there were some PlayStation branded shoes a while back that like sold out quick, like snap of a finger, mm-hmm. like. You know, apparently the higher end shoe market is just crazy. Yeah. Like I've heard stories, and it's just phew. it's it's like the um the uh, SA one SA two complete uh, combined vinyl box just sold out in like a minute. Yeah, it's really pissed off Skyler. I was gonna say talk to Skyler about that one sometime. Um, so then we got to a Q and A, and uh, quick shout out. I think our pal G Wiz was the first one. I believe she was talking asking about Crush Forty playing. Um, it looked like her for that was her. Next. I think that was her. So um, I, shout out I to you. Hit her up. Even if she wasn't, even if there wasn't her, hit her up anyway. She's cool. Up. She's awesome. I get, every for the last two years. I, I after it happens because she's always there. Mm-hmm. I add her on Twitter. I'm like, I said this like for last. You know, <laughs> like, first she was like, you know what? I'm gonna come to. I'm gonna come next year. And it was like, I know I said this last. I'm gonna come next year. It's like I know I said this for the last two years. I'm gonna come next year. I think I saw your tweet to her. I'm like, this is gonna keep happening. <laughs> no, I've, I've I've always wanted to to visit Austin and South by South It looks fun. And I guess if we could go to one of those panels, I guess, while you're there, yeah, while I'm there, you know, whatever. May as well. Um, so this the second the exact second question starts a trend that I love throughout this whole thing. A small kid goes up and you hear the voice and you're like, okay, here we go. This is going to be a terrible question. No, no wait, like, no, 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 no. This wasn't the kid. I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun here. The second question, he was he seemed you know younger, but not like child. I got ahead of myself. But someone asked Aaron about the 3D Blast demo t- demo tape oh, that John yeah. Burton has. Yeah, you know, good question. Good question. Yeah, and like my note already is like good journalism here like people actually asking hard hitting questions which impressed me throughout the panel um he feel like he said he hadn't been contacted about it but I'm pretty sure John Burton maybe he reached out to June about it I th- and June he, was like he, I don't know he he, I, I'm pretty sure he made a video where he talks about he reached out to, to June maybe on Facebook or Twitter mm. and June was just like 
Like it's you not, have to talk to Sega. It's like it's not it's not up to me, but like no. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, Aaron can do something with that because uh, you know, there's some tracks that are maybe cool. unused. Yeah. You know, I, like part of me is like just put it online, fucking anyway. That's that's what everyone so else doing does. Doing an anonymous thing, like oh, I found this on the street. I don't I mean, know. That happens every time in like retro. Like, I found this like weird demo version of Hero. Let's put it online for the internet to have. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What we're saying a lot, is, a lot is of that, that stuff goes on. Is that be be more illegal? Yes, please. Um, so my next note. <laughs> Izuka saying donkey mode added oh about God. three years to my lifespan. <laughs> what I, the? I just love him looking over at Aaron like donkey mode. Do you think? Oh. Do you think Wibber knows about that? It's just a serious question. Of course, Aaron, Aaron knows. Izuka was probably like, "What the fuck? You talk to was, me after well, this." Because no, during it, even we- oh, the Twitch thing, Weber was just being coy. He's like, oh, "I have no idea what that is." Mm. Because he said that, which probably, probably, like, I mean, they patched it out. There's no way he doesn't know. Okay. <laughs> no, let, let's be real here. Uh, shout out to the Billy Hatcher dude who's asking about Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher sucks. I'm sorry. That's not that's not a good game. I like the idea of like a vanity. Great, great visuals. The idea, but it, it suffers from. Well, I like the idea of a vanity re-release of that. It, it suffers from you know early 2000s Sonic Team of just being shit. You know. Yeah, but, you know, it's interesting to hear. Like Izuka say that no one's mentioned Billy Hatcher in a while. I'm like, really? You don't get like weird Facebook messages from random weirdos about that? About I feel Hatcher. like everyone messages him about everything. But anyway, um, so you know, we did get the reconfirmation that Jen's classic. Oh yeah, the the confirmation that Jen's classic is Mania Forces classic. Which merely that being said, I'm sure caused David to convulse on the ground wherever he was. <laughs> Oh, oh God! But it can't work. It's selling a bitch that doesn't work in that timeline. <laughs> and good points. We, but we, fuck you, David. We love you, David. Come on the show. <laughs> mm. My next note is that this eleven-year-old asking about Hypersonic's return is living in three thousand eighteen. <laughs> this is one of the trends where it's like some kid comes up and you're like, "All right, here some, we go." Some kid and, is... and he's like asking questions we would ask, and you're like, "Oh, okay." Well, no, he's asking questions smarter than I would ask. Yeah. No, but it's crazy because I, I swear to God, because, because when, when Alan Weber turns around, turns around and said, this question has been asked before to save Izuka time, I'll answer it. And I thought for sure he was going to give the stock on the, I swear before the answer I've heard was something about the hyper emeralds that weren't canon. The, the, the super emeralds are not canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I thought, but then the fact that it's just like, no, nah, because it's too much like Dragon Boy. Like I never knew that was, I never knew that had been said before. So I thought that I thought that yeah. was pretty. I'm wondering, pretty neat. I'm wondering if that was just him goofing for a kid, or if that was actually part of the reason. Uh, I guess it could be both. You I, know, you know cause I, the fact that Izuka was there, the fact that he said Izuka said this before, I can't see Weber just making that up. True. Yeah. In, yeah. in that regard, in front of his boss, per se. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, like you know, the next note, another young kid, like I forget how young this kid said he was, but he's asking about the Michael Jackson involvement. It was like, like he was like. Hey, Eight years old. Yeah, and, and he's like, "Hey, is that why you had to change the music in the Sonic and Knuckles collection?" I'm like, Pfft. "I want to, I want to say the best thing about that because um, I was watching, I was watching the last half. I was Izuka's face. I was on my way home. No, Izuka and Weber's face. Yeah, because as soon as as soon as <laughs> the word Michael Jackson is said, Weber's face is just like, oh fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, he <laughs> that was fucking amazing. A great game to play during this too is watching Tyson like freak out over all these little kids asking these great questions because he looked like fucking overjoyed. They went they get, all, all the adults asked really dumb well, not all of them but like all the adult questions were wor- way worse than the kid ones were. Like, the one that killed me it's like are you guys going to use Shadow and Silver more in the future? I'm like I've got a game you should play called Sonic Forces that just released. But that sh- <sighs> Silver doesn't play in that game. So he's well I mean he's in the game. He's in the game but you don't play as him. He's in the game. But Izuka seemed genuinely stumped. Um, he gave an answer to Mr. Austin Keys, who Austin Keys was like, yeah, I wasn't there, so I don't know. So here's kind of what he said. I'm like, hmm, he's obscuring the truth. I think He's a truther. You know, it's weird, though, because that, that, was, that was the first time he, he didn't mention, like, because I think most of us can take a... a um, Pretty educated guess. Educated guess that yes, it's all to do with Michael Jackson's music. But Sega, I've never officially said that. But this, like, Izuka... Cle- I, forget, I forget what word he, he used... But he, he 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 said something like legal trouble or like deals. He, he I forget the exact words. I have to go back and listen. There's some like development difficulty to do the stream. But like Izuka pretty much made it sound like yeah, it, like Jackson is the reason why. Which I thought was like okay, you know what? That's pretty good. Yeah, that's the closest thing you're ever going to get into an answer on that, unless something pretty breaks. Much. As far as I'm concerned, well, again, Yuji Naka said that when the time came to tell us he would, but like Jackson died a couple of years ago. Why didn't they tell us yet? Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, so someone asked about Super Mighty and Super Ray with regards to Sonic Mania. Good question. Yeah, fair, yeah, fair question. Yeah, fair question. The answer was uh, we haven't even. Or, no, okay, I'm getting it mixed up with the cartoon question earlier, but yeah, like Izuka's face was just incredible. He looked so like I don't know if it was annoyed or like oh my god, how do we not think of this? He had a look on his face that was legendary. But yeah, they said just play the game, and find out, which to me says. I, I'm like I'm like digging them, digging. They have to be in it. They would. I I don't think they go to the trouble of doing that about giving it to. Although they have they have canonly said in the past that only hedgehogs can go super, but in Mania, tails and knuckles do. Mm-hmm. So get fucked. So hopefully. Also, did Ray always have blue shoes? Maybe I'd, I'd have to go back and check mm-hmm. the uh, arcade footage. I just remember um, seeing Ray. I'm like those blue shoes. They look pretty good on them. I like that. It's a nice detail. Not bad. Array the flying squirrel. Uh, they were red, but there is art of him with. I think the I think that looks like a Nabrok right made, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Nabrok. Oh, okay. It looks like the comics gave him blue shoes. Yeah. The, ah. They also well, they also redesigned. They also gave mighty original shoes, so they weren't just Sonics. But I guess in this game they're keeping those. Now let's talk about Ray's feet. <laughs> I've got a great trailer for Sonic OVA 2 I needed to watch. Um, oh, fuck you, Chris. So <laughs> the, fuck you. There fuck. was one more thing. So um, we get a teaser of a car being started up, which has been rumored about for uh, months. Month Multiple now? toy companies yeah. have said, like, yeah, there's a Sonic Racing game company coming. Coming out at some point. There's Play a, it. There's a persistent rumor that it is from Sumo Digital and Sonic only. And, and, I and think that I, Sonic series only. And I think Sumo Digital have announced... They, put like ads on like LinkedIn for like we're making a, a new racing game we need people like to work a, on specifically it. a kart racer I think kart is racer. the terminology and again you know, obviously the Sonic brand wasn't mentioned but um, it doesn't like a genius to, yeah. to put two and two together I won't lie when Aaron said like it won't be another SART obviously that was very specifically acronymed but yes. my hope was like with all the crash stuff going on I was like oh they're making a crash racing game they're who mm. I would trust to make one. Well, no, see, because saying it's saying it's not um, SART, this is not going to be a Sega All Stars game. Yeah, exactly. This is that gave be him a Sonic racing. That game. gave him an out, and which gives not... them which gives them an out to be technically correct, but still like no, it's a fucking it's essentially a Sega All Stars racing game, but with Sega removed. Sonic and No Stars Racing is what uh, I've been calling it. Which, to be fair, that was that was kind of transformed. At that point, most of those characters hadn't been worthwhile in years. <sighs> The same matter to me. Was it, like it, Danica Patrick and Regret yeah, Ralph and Yogg's cast <laughs> and Banjo Kazooie <laughs> and Team Fortress it, Two. Chris, think about it. If if that if that game came out now, there was a chance there could have been a Yakuza. Bayonetta probably would have been in. She was close to getting in the second one. Yeah, what well, wasn't she? At uh, that point, I think it, I think it was just like Smash hadn't broke that ground of like you could make this character work in a PG setting. Best, uh, I guess be, or, even even, yeah. at, even at that point she's more culturally relevant than so many other characters they use in there yeah and like for me I like the, the culturally irrelevant characters like Bonanza Brothers in the first game like who the fuck thinks to put Bonanza Brothers in that's great but yeah like that that exact thought kills me it's like I could have had you know that Tokyo Cityscape as a racetrack if nothing else like anyway um, that's really a bummer for me if it's Sonic only I hope they get to take full advantage of that and use like actually unique and lesser used locales and concepts and stuff for the racing got like a nice fleshed out cast of like Ray the Flying Squirrel yeah, I'm, um, I'm like if, if this is Sonic only if they really need to do a you know a good fucking every character they need to justify losing the diversity of Sega's entire so catalog so if, if it is I expect like all of Team Chaotix playable the Babylon Rogues playable Team Dark like you know I expect all that shit yeah I hmm that's probably where they're going to me this is weird from a business decision because like or direction because like you know slowly but surely Sega's leveraging more of their IP there's a spatial 5 VR there's a new House of the Dead arcade game um New Daytona came out last year um there's other things I'm blanking on right now um Valkyria Chronicles 4 like they're you know hitting up their IP again you would think that'd be the perfect time to make another one of these and like get those names out there even more circulating more Sega Forever's hitting that's a whole thing they can tie in like it's so weird to me that now they're like oh it's Sonic only well to me, to me it kind of makes sense in terms of, if you just think of the racing games as its own franchise mm-hmm. Sega All-Stars Racing Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed Sonic Racing <laughs> they very slowly Sega work their way down 
seeing a very slowly gets removed from their own franchise. Yes, we should probably mention, I'm not sure if this was like a meme and it's not going to be there in the final logo or if that's part of the logo for some reason. Oh, that, that has to be part of the logo. But the Sonic RR was oh. like flashed up, which is random. They said it's not a sequel to any previous game, which I think they said about Forces. <laughs> But, um, you know, that which, aside. Which is weird because they also confirmed that Voice is kind of a sequel to Mania. So. And Generations, yeah. by virtue of saying that's the same Sonic. Yeah. So, I kind of had the thought for a second. It's like. Oh, that ain't good. Uh, yeah, it hurt. Trust me. Who I'm afraid I've been thinking. <laughs> a dangerous notion, I know. In, in my mind, I'm like, I wonder if they'll incorporate all the Sonic racing names in there. I was like, that's got to be like Sonic Drift Racing. Then I remember the Rider series. I'm like, that doesn't fit in there anywhere. But I was thinking, like, oh, maybe they'll have some ways to represent riders and some ways to, like, a Sonic R track. But, uh. The fact that it's, it's, it's car racing, I'm like, I, I get why, in, in context of a Sega game, like, Sega All Stars Racing, why you need vehicles. But part of me was, was hoping if, if this, you know, like, not, maybe not Sonic R2, but maybe lose the cars. I feel like an idea that's been kicking around, suggested by fans forever, is, like, unleashed gameplay, but racing. Fuck yeah, dude! SA two multiplayer as a full game. Yeah, or like Sonic Rivals, but good basically is the idea. Yeah, and I always kind of want to see how that works out. But you know, I'll. Sumo Digital makes great games. Mm-hmm. They've you know the last two have been good. I would only hope that this potential hypothetical third Sumo Digital racing game that totally isn't confirmed. <laughs> um, the one thing that bothers me about those two games playing them still, the characters always look so dead. Yeah. And the voice clips being from older games doesn't help that. If they can Who are actually, you? And how do you know my name? That's, that's the only one I can even remember now. Because it's such, like, emblematic of what I'm talking about. But if they can get, like, some actual life into, like, the faces and, like, you know, maybe some new dialogue. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be all. That would be good. But I just dread seeing Sonic's center mouth, goofy-ass eyes, and, like, Dr. Eggman, static, stiff, like, oh, ho, oh, oh, I won. Let's get some character in the characters. I'm sure the tracks will look great. I'm sure the game will feel great to play. Music will probably be Sonic R Man. Just you bring know. some TJ Davis. Bring some Hopefully TJ some, Davis. I mean, what else is she doing? She's got to be in. Um, I think she tours a lot. I follow her on Twitter. I think she tours a lot. <laughs> That's what she wants you to think. <laughs> nah, I'm sure she's doing fine. But, you know, it's like, so that'd be a really good thing. When mm-hmm. did Sonic R come out? 96? I don't know that time, yeah. Okay, so this isn't a 20th anniversary thing. Never mind. They're not us. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, supposedly we'll see more on March 22nd, because during some Sonic live stream, there was some silhouetted, like, guy with, like, a racing helmet, racing suit, being like, I shut everything down on March 22nd. The Stig? Is a reference you won't get, but for anyone English out there who used to watch Top Gear, my man knows. Oh, that's why it sounds familiar. Never watched it, heard the name. Um, basically, yeah, that apparently on 22nd, it'll get announced, and that kind of makes sense. It's like, you know, tease it at the panel for the people there, and then actually announce it a little bit later. So um, hopefully we see a trailer soon and aren't waiting until like E3. Hmm. But, you know, I could see a March reveal, September, October release kind of thing. Probably November, but... It'll, did they confirm this year for that game? They, Is there anything? They didn't really talk about it. It's like, oh, that's a weird secret video. Hmm. That's like 15 seconds long and kind of... It's not- just of a realistic car. <laughs> So well, what I did with it's kind of really bad. T- it's also underwhelming because and okay, not everyone, but most people who follow this stuff, like unfortunately we do, <laughs> was like you know it's weird because when when they when they said because before the Q and A they said um, stay stay tuned because they were they were having a few things at the end, and at the end when they were like oh you know um, everyone gets a print, I was, I was like that that can't be it because then they, they know this is being live streamed. They would not say something like that for the end so I was like something's, something's coming and then as soon as they were done they had one, one more of their scripted oh you know what maybe something else is going to happen mm-hmm. I was like I was like, it's going to be a teaser for that racing game because we all knew it was coming like, mm-hmm. I knew it was going to be a teaser for the racing game I was just like I expected something more than that <laughs> I was expecting to be a little more meta about it like I remember when they announced the Sonic Adventure 2 HD port I don't think this trailer ever made it online they made a little trailer it's like from the best sleuths at Sega you know and like the letters were like falling off basically because like Sonic Adventure 2 HD had leaked so they were like making fun of themselves it's like you know we're the the best detectives and keeping things secret so it's like a nice little like haha I was totally expecting them to take that approach because like we this has been kicking around for a couple months now at this point the the last time I can think that happened officially was with um, 
Ninja Turtles moved into Manhattan. Uh-huh. That got leaked like a month in advance, and I think on the official Platinum account, they had um, they had a dripping they had a dripping faucet, and they were like, "Tomorrow the official leak happens." They're like, "That's that's great. That that, that uh-huh. that's a really kind of clever way to announce the fact that you know we know everything, but we have to Platinum gets it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know. fully confident will be great. Fully confident is a game I'll enjoy. I'm curious to see if they try and top the transform mechanic and bringing something new in or if they just buckle down on their usual like drift to win kind of boosty well, yeah, I wonder, item I wonder, stuff. I wonder if it will transform or if it will go back to more of a kind of standard racer. Probably standard which is you think so? kind of a shame but also like how do you evolve upon that transform concept you know? By, so, li- by licensing transformers. Yes but Sega um Hey, there was that fucking weird Transformer themed splat- officially sanctioned Splatfest. Uh, Nintendo though, but then again, Sega's making that Japanese Transformers arcade game. So yeah, Sega Sega does have. I think Sega does hold the uh, arcade license for Transformers. Mm. Well, I did think of one more thing with all that mentioned though. I want the, the characters to not seem dead. Hopefully, some items that are relevant to Sonic and not say uh, yeah, that, a blowfish. That that is one of the. I think we we've said that in a, in a few All Stars Gaming. It's one of the few episodes. Low it's of just Transform. like it's it's like Nintendo has you know all, most most of the, their weapons are from French you know like the Mario franchise. So you know what they are like. Yeah, this is why why isn't the speed icon fucking Sonic shoes? It's know? like when we were playing. Um, that certain fighting game today where the fish was not a weapon and you hit people with a fish. It's like, why is there a fish here? <laughs> why? Anyway, um, it's not too much to talk about. We haven't seen any of the Project Plus stuff. I'd really like to see how those characters play and all. But, um, you know, we've covered a panel. It was... Uh, I think... It was awkward, but I'd say solely due to the things... the be- Having the benefit of what they had to announce, it was probably the best one of these. I think this is... Um, I mean, uh, you know, the 25th anniversary party was still probably the best because we did get two full game announcements. Oh, I'm talking solely the South by West. Yes, yeah, so this is but... this is miles better than last year because last year last year just felt like a fucking waste of time because because it, it was like because nothing. The only things that were really revealed last year was that Flying Battery was in was in Mania, which yes. was like okay, but we don't need a a, a a panel for this. They revealed some artwork. And they showed us like ten, like twenty. They showed us like the first thirty seconds of um, of uh, city of uh, sea, seaside heights. I think the level is from forces the modern the modern uh, Sonic level in the city where everyone thought is you know because it was so basic. Everyone's like this is level one. This is level one. It's, no, it's level fifteen. Good job. Um, but and it's like I was like everything in that panel they could have just fucking. Put on their YouTube channel. Hey, they did show a really blurry image of um, something Monarch Seven from Mania, Titanic Monarch. Oh, they did. I don't, I don't remember that. No, wait, no, it was um, the the Press Palace. It was like one of oh, the Press gears Palace, yeah, yeah, real yeah. blown up, and like, wonder what this will be. And they never really followed up on that. You kind of had to figure it out yourself after a while. And it's just like, yeah, I I don't remember because I I this is how pathetic I was back then. <laughs> I, I took time I took I used vacation time to oh. come home from work early to watch that panel and that's why okay. for this year I was like fucking never again <laughs> fool me once shame on me fool me twice fuck you See, I had the nice benefit like, I was at work so I just checked my phone at the point I'm like oh Mighty and Ray that looks yeah, really I, good I did you know I, 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 I kind of knowing what time the panel was I, I timed some bathroom breaks <laughs> to just check on things so I saw Mike and I was like, okay that's cool that's cool yeah I caught up on it eventually to talk about it for the show like a good mm-hmm. boy but eh you you know, know, I, was, was, I, I don't remember the first one but this is probably the best one I remember just because me in general watching it I remember just being like this is such a fucking waste of time like what is what is this it's so, I feel bad for because Mike Pollock and um, what did you me for there and they just spent most of that panel just sitting in silence. I well, this is this is a waste of. I mean, I'm sure it was fun for them to go to, you know, a convent like a panel place. But I was like, this is a waste of their time. Um, but you know, I, I will say this again. I, I honestly can't remember if we said this at the beginning, but for a um, a panel that was supposed to be about the future of Sonic the Hedgehog, it is it is weird how they mostly just focused on uh, classic. Well, not just that. They mostly just focused on a physical version, a slightly updated version of a of an old game, and teased a spin off game everyone already knew about. Like I was expecting more. It's technically the future of Sonic. 
but it, it's it, it's the future of Sonic, but it's like it's 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 not the fu- it's not the, the future of of the main series. Yeah, I feel like calling it that. You at least get some expectation of like they're going to talk a little bit about the direction of the series going forward and like what they're learning from forces and what they want to keep from forces, some weird stuff like that. Yeah. So the the main thing I took away was that like they feel confident in continuing to work with um, the Mania team. Apparently, good. They're going to invest in that, and that's good. But you know. As a general future for the series, it's like, what's up with the show you currently have going on? What's up with the modern series? Um, they talked a little bit about the comic. You know, you guys will talk about that on says. Yep. Um, but still, it's like... Mm. Maybe a bit more, Sega. Maybe a bit more for this panel you said would be about the future of the franchise. And yeah. it's not. You know, basically just um, stop playing Sonic and buy Yakuza instead is what I got Yay. from that. Um, so we did get some emails. It was pretty light. We must have answered everyone's questions by now. Everyone's like, we know everything about Sonic. I think everyone just forgot what the fuck this show was. Because it's been so long since I, the last I put out one whole tweet, okay? <laughs> um, so starting with the first one I got. From my Echo 4 <clears throat> Hey, TJ. I really hope you're in the room, because I only have questions for you. No. It said, hey, Scrubs, I actually have two questions for you. One, with the IDW comics coming around the corner, and with it taking place after Forces, I was thinking... If Archie still had the Sonic comic rights, I'll stop you right there. No. <laughs> Fuck that. No. How would you think Ian and company would handle a Forces arc? Would they add classic or even Mega Drive Sonic from the comics? Maybe Mega Drive could connect with the Forces arc or something? How would Infinite play a role in this? What do you guys think? Um, I, I think if Archie still had the rights, they would not touch Forces for a very long time. The way I mean, it's 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 common knowledge now, especially with how um, the world the world adventure arc ended. That Ian was set up for a Lost World adaptation, um, and I I don't see because they they very typically did at least pre read but they very tip rarely did full on game arcs since like the days before Ian. They then they just did those, those kind of like um, like uh, spin off. Comic books thing, so I, I don't think they would have touched forces. If they did, I don't think they would have done classic song. I think they would have just kept it to. Also, it's weird. To, it's weird to do with forces because how do you do the avatar? You, they, they would probably have just had to have done the kind of stock red wolf with the glasses. Yeah, and then they can't talk unless they change that for the comic. But it's like if you change that for the comic, just make them speak in the game. I think uh, I think they did the, in, in the first. Um, in the first comic they released, the kind of uh, um, oh, he does talk, doesn't he? I think he, I think he, he talks in a chaotic. It was all a dream. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. The thing with adding classic is, it's like if you're doing forces, I guess it has to happen during the events of forces. But you know, it's just like, well, he's definitely just going to be there, standing around. You know, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> he doesn't even do anything in forces, and you know, the comic could flesh that out, but. Uh, <sighs> As for how Infinite would play a role, um, hopefully they would make him a villain worth caring about. Could do I, stuff. I, I trust Ian to handle something like that pretty decently. Um, yeah, Ian could, have, Ian could have done something with Infinite. It's just he's a terrible character. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. Hey, Ian himself said there are no bad characters, only bad writers. So way to go. No, he, no Infinite's a bad character. <laughs> <laughs> just inherently bad. Infinite is just a terrible, terrible fucking character. Yeah. Um, I'm not weak. You know, I wouldn't mind a Forces arc someday to salvage that game, basically. Oh, again, okay, the fact that it seemed... I, I don't think they've don't officially said it, but it's strongly hinted... It's taking place after, after Forces. Forces. So, yeah, I, so I, it probably I, don't, won't happen. I don't think we'll get a Forces arc. What a shame. <laughs> Question two. Do you have high hopes for the CG in the Sonic film since it's being developed by Marza and Blur? Interesting note from the panel, they did not mention Marza, even though they're definitely working with they just that. Did it, What did I say? Just say they said Blur? The, they mentioned Blur and, like... Um, the Neil Moritz guy, I think is the name, and they're like, and Tim Miller, the director of Deadpool, are working on the film. And say, oh. <laughs> Remember that, thing, that, that, that movie that is not based on what our target demographics should know about? And, like, they mentioned Burst Studio, but, you know, didn't even mention, like, yeah, they did the uh, CG for Shadow, right? Shadow and 06. Yes. Yeah, and it, possibly possibly the first Writer's game. So I feel like you kind of mentioned that, maybe, right? You think so? It seems like a good thing to say to that It room. seems a good thing the fact that, you know, because those CG cutscenes, they which one of those game. That's good CG. Like yeah. that, that is good fucking CG. So yeah, yeah. So as so, for high hopes, I, I, I I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure it'll look good. I'm sure the CG will look good. Whether either Mars or Blur does it, they're both great looking studios. So yeah. I'm yeah. like, if, whoever ends up doing it, I'm sure it'll look good. I, I'm way, you know, if, if David was her, I'm sure I, I would echo his sentiment. 
I'm far more curious about the, the direction the script's going to go in. Yeah. Yeah, I have no doubt that from a production standpoint, that'll probably be a pretty good movie to look at in terms of the CG elements. So, so it's everything else that puts it into question for me. Night of the Warehog's still a fucking good looking oh. thing. You know, even the um, the Shadow costume, the 06 CG costume still look great today. So, you know, yeah. visually, I have no, no worries. No worries whatsoever. Yeah, I hope the art direction goes in tandem to help make something that stands the test of time. Mainly. Just take the fucking game models. Mm. Too, e- too easy. They're too good. But well, it has to be live action. Speaking of movies, I'm not sure if, if we mentioned the fact that it's been confirmed that Sonic the Hedgehog is going to be in Ready Player One. His cameo I was, in Ready Player One. I was just kind of not mentioning that one, honestly. Yeah, he gets shot by the Iron Giant. <laughs> the kid's like, you are not a gun, Iron Giant. He's like, I am for this one. Sonic, <laughs> Sonic's holding a bunch of rings and gets shot and dies instantly, even though he has rings. Yeah, and then he like flickers back into existence. He's like, haha, video games. I'm going to go make out with Tracer from Overwatch. And then he goes to make out with Tracer from Overwatch. I'd do it. Er- she seems, she seems nice. Our next question comes from the person who tortured us today. Sup, it's Calico Plus. Oh, you rat bastard. Out of all the 3D supersonic boss fights, so the final bosses of SA1 to Unleashed, what would you consider the best and worst? Best, I would say... This is a tough question, because to me they're all pretty mediocre. At best. <laughs> and and maybe this is, is nostalgia talking, but maybe... SA1? SA, maybe Chaos... I was kind of going that because chaos, chaos is slightly dull. It is not, it is not painful to play. Some of the later ones, the worst might have to go to time eater. Maybe or if if we just if we're just talking main series, he did say SA one to unleash, but to unleash, okay, okay. okay. A well, well then, point. um, from SA one to unleash, uh, maybe 06? 06? You know what? Um, I I I don't remember what the um. I, I have no memory of playing the hero in Final Boss. You don't remember Metallic Overlord? I remember what it is, but I don't remember how it plays. Um, he throws things at you. You have to build up your meter for the Z move, the special team move. Then you hit it, and it hits him. Oh, that, that sounds good. But he's like throwing Eggman ships or stuff at you, isn't it? Now that you mention it, I don't remember these specific attacks. They may be... Because maybe... Because I can think of it, maybe Shout a Hedgehog. It's a pretty weak the Devil Doom. <laughs> hey, that's super shadow. Where you just shoot its ass. I mean, I think that's pretty hot. I, I could, you know, I could set the time to that. <laughs> but yeah, as far as the worst for me, it's probably 06 just because even to this day, I'm still not sure how you're supposed to do that. Yeah, the one thing, <laughs> the one thing about um, Shadow's line in 06 to makes me. I think it's a good line for Shadow. Where he's like, an, an, an interdimensional time god. This might be a fair fight. I'm like, okay, I like that line. That line to me sounds like a Dragon Ball Z fan fiction writer sat down and was like, this is something Vegeta would say. Let's make Shadow say it. Hey, Shadow was, Shadow's cocky in SA2. I'm the coolest. And it's mm. being true to canon, Chris. Calico continues to say, congrats on the successful Patreon launch, by the way. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so much. It's, you know, I guess we never, we didn't even need to talk about that either. All right, let me finish the email. He says, I'll be a part of that soon enough, giving my life savings away to some funny internet people. There's so much wrong with that statement. Have a nice day. <laughs> we are so sorry, Calgo. But yeah, we've mentioned that. Um, probably not by the time this goes live, but hopefully some point soon. This podcast should start appearing on iTunes. Yes. Okay, we can say that. Okay. So um, expect that by around June, but you know, that Patreon money's funding stuff like that. If you want to help out, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> where did I have that last question? Okay, but do you have any more to say about that, Patreon? But yeah, just Exist? thank you so much. Um, it's something we we toyed about doing for a while. I think in about the, a year at least. Yeah, well, in the early days, I used to make jokes about it, so I I kind of have to eat a bit of shit for the fact that we we have one. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's you know, it's I I just <laughs> nice jump by the way. A, I jumped off a cliff. I, I I pulled an IGN and just jumped off a cliff. Um, it's you know, it I we didn't expect to uh, get so far at at this time of recording. We are almost at five hundred dollars which is mind-blowing to me thank you all so much it's gonna allow us to buy equipment hopefully go to some conventions um this year to do some more things and uh we just thank you everyone who would willingly give your money to help a bunch of idiots make crap for the internet yeah what he said yeah so our last question comes from telekinestic man question how much of the idw book do you expect to be adapted such as the force of stuff compared to new stuff. And what's the most... Well, okay, I'll, I'll save the next question for once we've answered this. So how much of the IDW book do you expect to be adapted? 
compared to new stuff. So I'm guessing what he's saying is like, how much are they going to cover the game plots versus just new material? Gotcha. Um, I, I, you know, in that regards, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it sounds the fact that this is tying in the forces afterwards makes it sound like to me like they're going to be a bit more involved. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe actually viewing the book as say a marketing tool for their video game series and adapting yeah. it. Uh, pretty kind of yeah, um, which is which is more than again after a while. Archie Archie would do like specific adaptations where they would just kind of do like the opening cutscene of a game, or the Black Knight, which is written by Ian Flynn, of course, all the way through. I love I love Ian Flynn, but it's 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 <laughs> oh, there's I love no, bringing that there up to you. Nothing different in that in that. I want to I want to maybe ask him about that, and he'll hit me in the face. It's just like there's a question for next year's South by Southwest panel. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so it, it sounds like, I mean, obviously, uh, post reboot, they, you know, we got, uh, Sonic, um, Sonic Fighters, we got Sorry, Unleashed. The, the textures on these buildings are fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we are, we're playing Shadow and we are watching a SD game on a HD TV, so. Still, anyway. Yeah, but, um, so yeah, that's a thing. Well, I kind of wonder how they'll do. I wonder if maybe, They'll let Ian have some knowledge of stuff in advance so he can plot out a plot, so to speak, so he can try and tie his original stories into the games and like make it all flow in a way. Or if it's just going to be like, oh, we got attacked by the forces plot and now we have to deal with that. Yeah, I, I, I can see this. I can see them more actively tying it into games now. So I, 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 w- I would expect, I would honestly expect direct adaptations when, when games come out now. Which I'd be okay with, you know. I'm fine, you know, it's fine. Because Ian will be able to fix things. If he, yeah, I was say, if it's going to be a game like Forces, I'd like Ian to be able to flush it out. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what he did. He said that in, in the prequel comics, the whole... Is that they they came to him to um to write those. And, you know, the, the notion of... Uh, so, from what he says about those, those four comic books, Sega came to him with the basic idea, like, in this one, it's going to be Silver Comes to Speak with, with Knuckles, type of thing. So, all, all of the uh, basic ideas were planned out by Sonic Team. Mm-hmm. And Ian was able to in, in a few places here and there fix minor plot holes like why why Knuckles is in charge or why Silver is there at all. Period. Two birds, one stone on that. Yeah, one. which so Ian Flynn was like, oh, Silver came to me first. That must mean I'm going to be the leader. Which again, there's no notion. Which means even in the um the Bumble cars, Ian Flynn's like it still doesn't make a it still doesn't really make sense why Knuckles is is in charge. But you know, <laughs> yeah, that's how it should have been tales, but he, unfortunately he just he just lost he just lost it. Oh, he's like he's, he's fucking lost it, guys. And what's the most likely IDW franchise for a crossover? Probably Ninja Turtles, if you ask me. Dude, I fucking wanted to do it so bad. But I'd like to see Transformers. Um, Turtle think, seems likely. I think Turtle seems the most likely. I know uh, Jonathan, our good buddy Jonathan, would go fucking crazy for trans. Those are his franchises: Transformers and Sonic. So that would that would get him. Happy. I, ideally, we get to a world where you don't have to choose. Both happen. We can, possibly, because you With know, enough time. You know? I, I did because most of IDW's work is is licensed stuff, and so like. Um, the turtles themselves, they've crossed over with Ghostbusters a few times with Batman. With you know, so IDW clearly know how to work that stuff. So I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised if I think because that question's come up a few times. I think they've said for like the first year or so, they're just focused on getting Sonic Thank out. Goodness. So, um, so yeah, I would I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in like a year, in like a couple of years, we get something. I really want a panel where Sonic's standing next to one of the Ninja Turtles in a rain, and it's like, "This is the spot where they killed Batman's parents, Sonic." <laughs> that would make me happy. No, they're on the Ark, and so I was like, "This is where Maria died, Raphael." <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. My first gut instinct is like, please keep it away from everything else because crossovers can be silly. But now I really want this. Um, hey, the Mega Man crossover was amazing. That one, yeah, yeah. The second one, um, um, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be pretty okay with IDW got Mega Man as well, and they were able to. Maybe... So they, they they'll do fucking something with it. Yeah, because and... Archie's been doing fuck all of it for the last few years. And, you know, I think that Mega Man crossover had its own issues that were probably, let's say. Not the fault of the creative team, perhaps. Oh yeah. Um, necessarily or inherently, so you know, third crack of that. 
be okay with that. Um, I don't really know IDW's properties, so it's hard for me to really say anything other than Turtles and Transformers would be Turtles, cool. Yeah. I know they have My Little Pony. Yeah, so everyone's wanting the uh, official Sonic Rainbow Dash. Yeah, and it's like, I guess if you have to do that, sure, why not? You know, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, it might do I, I, Yeah, like, what else does IDW have? I think they have Back to the Future as well. Fuck yeah. <laughs> TJ would shit his pants. I think I think that's IDW. What that makes they sense. Have, they have they have X Files. They have I think they they have all the Hasbro properties. But if they did Back to the Future, they could have a eighty eight and a half miles per hour joke, and Sonic could be like, "That's nothing." What are you, baby? <laughs> and then like Marty McFly would grab on the Sonic's left centermost spine, and it'd go back to like Green Hill Zone, and Sonic would be like, "I've never been here before." And Tails is like, "I don't remember this place." And then Doc McStuffins is like, "Why am I here?" <laughs> That's his name, right? Fuck, anyway. Fuck you, Chris. Did um our friend Spider Knife have a question, or was his question just please talk about the panel? Spider no, I Spider Knife's question was regarding the uh, Michael Jackson uh, thing. Let me so Okay, yeah. Let me wanna make sure we're pulling that up. Yeah, but so again the tweet I said was the kid who asked Izuka about Michael Jackson's music in PC port of Three and Case, my new hero. And um our main man Spider Knife who, who drew all the amazing fucking artwork for the Patreon said so yeah my question for the hot cost tomorrow is talk about all of this wonderful news um, no yeah go to hell Spider Knife yeah so we've done all that I believe there was <sighs> I'm sorry Maria's dying in front of us right now <laughs> and it's those fucking bug eyes I hate them I so much I believe there was one oh did you already ask the question in the in the discord we did oh we did not oh you know what I believe it's the same question oh wait we, yes we did question we I copy answered. pasted that into my notes hey so um, so yeah um, you know I think uh, so if everyone can sign my petition for Activision to announce the Spyro the Dragon Treasure Trilogy I'd really appreciate it <laughs> you were so bummed <laughs> you were so bummed I, I need Spyro the Dragon claw me. Um <sighs> I was it just felt like it was going to happen you know yeah, and it'll probably be announced by the time we put this up to make it awkward maybe um, but I think so it just to round up how do you think in terms of 2017 as a year for this terrible franchise how do you think it went it reminds me of how I feel about Sonic in a whole there's a part of it that gives me a lot of hope and makes me really happy mania and the rest of it makes me wonder how, how anyone at this company functions with an IP like Sonic and fucks it up so miserably <laughs> I don't know how you have one of the world's biggest names and just keep doing this mm, especially yeah. after so many times where it's like oh we've learned it's like well you know, force like, isn't really. bad but <laughs> By now, I'd hope you'd have a better grasp on how to make this kind of game. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I would, I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't call Force is a terrible game. It's just bland, it's, boring. Should have been better. Yeah, it's just it's it's a wet fart. There's nothing really good about it, you know. It's just hmm. so. There was a time recently where you said you're done with Sonic. Did yesterday's panel change your mind? Ah. Uh, no, not, not really. No, not really. <laughs> because you know, if because um, I think when when I, when I said that, I also made the caveat that I am I am totally down for more mania. Hey, you're getting that. Yeah. So like you know, how about more Sonic No Stars racing? I mean, yeah. I mean, I you know, I love Transformed. I'll, I'll wait to see more of that. But you know, I I big fan of Transform, so I'm. Down for that. It's, it's really it's it, you know and obviously I, I'm in for the comic book and so we're really I guess it's really, a Sonic team I guess really, really I should amend my statement where like I'm kind of done with Sonic team games because they've kind of shown that they don't know what the fuck they're doing um, mm. Sonic team is 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 terrible and I hate Se- Sega nothing was ever good about Sonic please save me some cupcakes I don't remember I still is this, is this how it works we trash Sonic and then we get cupcakes yes I still maintain that Sonic Team seems to be a decent developer and that Forrest has just had a lot of direction issues I we, think is the main thing we like did, weird mm. staffing being moved to other areas they should have not been in like all the level designers from Unleashed being shuffled around no dude all, all the fucking level designers for Unleashed worked on Mario Odyssey well, I mean not all of them They're, a lot well, of them uh, like, some refer some were there, and some of the generations ones were in other positions on forces. Sonic Forces has had three level designers: one who hadn't worked on Sonic, one who'd worked on. The, I, th- I, thought, I thought it was two of them hadn't worked on Sonic, and one had just worked on Lost World. I'm getting there. One who hadn't worked on Sonic, one who had worked on um, the Olympics games, and one who had worked on Secret Rings, Black Knight, Colors, and Lost World. 
and that was their stable. And I think that last person was the lead. And that's, that's what I'm saying. So that's why like, everything was a fucking straight line in that game. Yeah, because there's an image that went around comparing credits and stuff, and like a lot of the designers from those games were in other positions on forces. And then you think it's like the game isn't great graphically, but you know it's fine, and like the music's it's, fine. It's terrible for a PS4 game. Generations looks better. And like it's really just kind of the level design that failed it and forces. And then you put that stuff together, it's like, well, hmm. It's all right. It's kind of a mess. It's kind of, I mean, so, the, the, that's what to me. It's like you know when they first in their first reveal trailer, it was like from the team that brought you Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations. Not really from the team who watched Sonic Generations and Sonic Colors brought, brings you this game. <sighs> that made me so excited, and ultimately, probably part of the reason why I feel so let down is it put that expectation on me of like, yeah. all right, the boost formula is back. They addressed that up front. You know, they're going back to the well. That was a dick move. They kinda, that was a dick move on their behalf to they, put that they in They kind of stood outside the well and looked down and spat in it. It was like, well, that's a long drop. We're not going down, though. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, so, you know, hopefully whoever assigns positions at Sega is like, well, let's maybe not do that this time. <laughs> yeah, let's maybe get someone who knows what the fuck they're doing to Which make a level design. Makes me wonder, is the next game another boost game? Is it able to go back to Lost World? Did they do something new? I can, I, I can see that. I can see the, um, the boost formula sticking around because it seems to be what pe- people were excited to have it back. So I could, I could see it coming back. I guess, yeah. Let's give me this a is fu- the ten year anniversary of Unleashed, so they gotta keep it up for the future. You know? <sighs> Let's give me a fucking SA one remake, man. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. What I fucking want is we, that, can although, either, we can only be so lucky or unlucky, Gareth. Although you know, I said that I said before the panel I was like, if, if they announce it, I'd be happy. But then someone's like, do you want the fucking forces team? I was like, you know what? Don't give me it because that would just fuck it up. That reminds me of an analog of like Burnout is a dead EA franchise, the racing game, and everyone's like, well, you know, maybe they should bring that back. I'm like, do you want current EA to bring Michael that back? transactions everywhere? Yeah, it's like, do you want current Sega to do a Sonic Adventure remake? Like, if you want, if, you if want, they got the musicians together, it's like we're going to redo the soundtrack and bring it live. I'm like, okay, I'm done for that. Yeah, he's like, if you want a break in the new game, you got to fucking pay. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> every break pedals ascent. <laughs> Just, Just dr- wired directly to your credit card. Ah, oh, we should end this podcast. This is a shorter podcast, but mainly because we did not talk about Forces, and you'll be able to catch all that in the Forces LP once I hit export and upload. Which I believe, if this is going up when I think it is, it'll be starting in less than two weeks. Yes, and if you're... um, Which tier of the Patreon gets an early 20 plus? No, 5 plus. Oh, it's 5 plus. Yeah, for for videos. If you you, um, if you uh, donate 5 plus, 5 dollars or more, you get access to early videos. So it's possible by the time this goes up, you have not listened to it yet because I don't think Chris has this movie's audio. Wow. That's a great benefit, Gareth, for the $5. You're telling me it only is that much to get early links to the videos? That's great. Why? Was that a good read of the script? Why, yes, that is all you need to do in order to get... Videos early. Ah, let's do this next year. It's a very expensive <laughs> film event. But yeah, um, so uh, it's, it's no wonder that they don't fucking do give us anything because all we do is shit on them. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I'll probably see how people feel about this. I probably won't be able to batch upload all that. So I'll probably check if people would rather me wait and put out one post with multiple links to that, or if I just need to like rapid fire post and give everyone a million emails. But we'll see what people. I, 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 I did that with uh, Mega Man 3 I broke it up into two different posts because I hadn't finished exporting all of it at, mm. at that point I'm just thinking seven parts it might take me a little bit so I'm not sure if people would rather get one at a time or three mm. at a time so we'll figure it out anyway this has been episode 9 of the Hogcast TJ's asleep in the corner uh, we have to stop this recording so we can go kick him um, can't wait for to play Sonic Mania again I guess yeah good game good game it's not, it's not bad it's good game Okay. Bye. Bye. All that I see now. Um. Um. Bye. Um. All that I see is.